DJ, it looked like you were the Detroit Lions' biggest fan postseason on Twitter. Yeah. Can you break down the tweets? Uh, I was just a big fan. I, you know, I've seen the energy in the team. Everybody, you know, everybody was hopeful for them to win the playoffs. And I just joined the bandwagon. I was like, man, look at the team. They're just hardworking guys. What's up, Detroit fans? Carlton Davis here checking in, man. Excited to be here, ready to come in and win the Super Bowl. Take that next step, baby. Let's go. Hey guys, Mark Stavport here. Happy to be in Detroit. Let's go, one pride. Lions general manager Brad Holmes and head coach Dan Campbell did so much work building this team up over the last couple of off seasons. But heading into this off season, we knew that they were going to take a different approach. They didn't need to change everything. They just needed to make some minor adjustments and get ready to compete to be the best team in the NFC next year and maybe even make the NFL Super Bowl, right? Now, from the jump, we knew defensively is where they needed to improve, right? Getting that yards per play allowed down from last season. Right now, they have done everything that says next season is going to be a whole new story. They're going to rewrite the script with the acquisitions they've made. They've added four defensive players and one big time offensive player as well. And not only are they looking like one of the best offenses in football, but this defense going into next season is about to be massively improved. In this video, we're gonna break down everything you need to know about the Detroit Lions offseason, who they've added, how they contribute, and why they will be the best team in football next season. Before we jump in the video, comment down a letter grade for their offseason so far. I'm gonna go give it an A- minus right away, but let me know what you guys think and let's jump into the video. Now, I think it would only be fair if we started off this video by talking about their big and only offensive acquisition this offseason. Kevin Zeitler is going to replace Jonah Williams as the main right guard of this football team, right? And a lot of people right away outside of Detroit are saying, yeah, that's fine. That's not a big, no, this is a massive addition. Not only has he graded above an 80 according to PFF and pass grade, but he is one of the best offensive line linemen in football right now. And you know what? You know what's crazy about this, guys, is you pair him up with already one of the best offensive lines in football with, you know, Taylor Decker, a former first round pick, Graham Gra uh, Glasgow, right, a former third round pick, but then Frank Ragnow and Panay Sewell. This team has four former first round draft picks playing in their primes of their career and only getting better. As their chemistry builds, as they continue to build that, you know, alignment together, this is going to be demoralizing for the entirety of NFL defensive coordinators to try to get pressure on Jared Goff. Now, really quickly, let's look at some of their offensive numbers for last season because I know a lot of you guys are panicking, like, why aren't the Lions making moves offensively? Guys, they don't need to. They rank number five in points per game, number two in yards per game, number two in red zone scoring percentage, and number two in touchdowns per game. And then we go to the running game rise, right? Five, number five in yards per carry, number six in rush yards per game, and number one in rushing touchdowns per game, okay? And then you go here, number four in QB sack percentage allowed, number four in interception percentage, number three in pass yards per game, number four in completion. I mean, this team, this offense was so deadly, they didn't need to make any adjustments outside of maybe adding a guard because Jonah Jackson was a free agent, right? They did that. They add Kevin Zeitler. The man has been insanely good, right? And you look at this, this uh, depth chart here for the Lions. This offense is absolutely stacked. You get another season with J-Mo under his belt, right? An offseason under his belt, getting, getting acclimated here in Detroit. I think this year will be massive for Jameson Williams. And then you look at them bringing back Dom with people Jones, a guy who they really do like. They traded for last season, I believe. I think he could be really good for them. They obviously love Khalif Raymond, but Amon Ray St. Brown or Amon Ross St. Brown is that game changer, okay? You don't need to make an upgrade at wide receiver. You have four guys you really like, and even Tom Kennedy is a guy I think is really solid as well. Offensive line, maybe they go and draft a guy to replace Kevin Zeller in a couple of years from now, right? Um, or next year. Man, the offensive line next season, it's unreal. And then you look at Sam Laporta, one of the best tight ends in football as a rookie last season. You have Jared Goff, who had an unbelievable season, barely turned the ball over, and a backup quarterback in Hendon Hooker that they like as well. David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs. What else do you need to do? 
nothing. The offense is set for next season. And then we have to get into the defensive side of the ball. And them adding DJ Reader is a massive addition to their defense right away. Now, before we get into all the defensive acquisitions, like the Marcus Davenport, the DJ Reader makes an unbelievable play right there. Swallowing the ball down at the line of scrimmage. Make sure you guys do me a favor. Hit the like button just so we can get this video out to more Lions fans around the world. And if this video gets 300 likes, we will be dropping a part two. And we'll be covering the NFL draft as well. Some prospects I think the Lions are about to lock into. So if you guys want that, make sure you guys hit the like button. But also subscribe if you're new. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Guys, for real, if you guys aren't subscribed, I don't know what, what you're doing, what you're waiting for. Lions videos for the rest of the offseason. Mini camp, training camp, whatever you guys need. I got you guys covered. But with that being said, let's talk a little bit about DJ Reader. Now, DJ Reader is a guy who is not going to wow you in sack percentage. He's not going to wow you in terms of, you know, making uh, crazy tackles. But he's a guy that can do it all very well, okay? Now, he's very well balanced. He can get to the quarterback slightly, right? He can add pressure. Um, but again, don't think he's going to come and bring you five sacks. He's not going to do that. He might. He's not going. Most likely, he's going to be a guy who's going to get you, you know, a good amount of run stuffs. Can clog up the middle. I mean, look at this man. Massive human being clogs up the middle, can stop the run, and just adds, you know, uh, versatility on the defense line who can just swap balls down at any point in time. He's massive frame, big body, and knows how to play football. But the big thing about DJ Reader, guys, and this is my favorite thing about DJ Reader, right? There's some guys in the NFL who love money, right? These guys who love money, they don't really love the game of football. They're just there to make money, right? DJ Reader loves football. Okay, and you talk about Dan Campbell, you talk about what they're doing in Detroit, this is the perfect fit. This is a guy who wants to win every single possession. This is a guy who already told you, hey, I love what Detroit was doing, and he was on a different football team, okay? He was looked from afar and said, I love this football team of hardworking dogs. DJ Reader is the perfect fit. Now again, when you look at DJ Reader's stats, nothing jumps off the page. You know, he's never had over two and a half sacks in a season. Um, he stayed relatively healthy, but never played a full season outside of 2016 and 2018. Other than that, been a little bit banged up here and there. But what do you expect? The, the man is 6'3", 335 pounds, former fifth round pick out of Houston. Last season had 34 uh, total tackles, which is good for an interior defensive lineman who, you know, is just massive like that, right? 20 solo, one sack, one fumble recovery. Um, you know, the pass deflections have always been there. But 30 and a half run stuffs over his career as well. Again, this is not going to be a guy that will wow you with his stats. But what he does, the little things he does, the small things that he does goes a long way. These are the things you need on your football team, right? And we go back to their defense last season. Again, they were one of the best in terms of stopping the run. However, got a little bit inconsistent in terms of stopping the run near the goal line. I think DJ Reader is a guy that can help them get stops in the goal line, but as well maintain what they did last season defensively up front. However, you get down here, this is where, you know, they needed to improve. The sack percentage, right? Um, you know, the, the pass yards allowed per game, the uh, the completion percentage, they need to upgrade some of these things. And let me tell you, they did exactly that as well. Now, Marcus Davenport, they just brought in Marcus Davenport. This man is also one of those guys you just want on your football team. A guy who was a former first round pick for the New Orleans Saints back in 2018, only 27 years old, but look at him. 6'6", 265 pounds as an edge rusher is insane this guy is going to get to the quarterback now listen last year only played in four games um after signing to minnesota but played for uh you know the saints for about five seasons now in those five seasons actually we're gonna call it four because again like i said didn't play last season too much at all but in four se five seasons with the saints had 23 sacks over 140 tackles, 81 solo, a force or seven force fumbles, I, I should say. Seven force fumbles. This guy can get to the quarterback, but is also very smart in terms of, you know, getting pressure, getting hit, hand on the football, and forcing some turnovers. That is something you love out of Marcus Davenport. But as well, is really good in stuffing the run as well at times. Again, not someone who's going to change everything for your team. Not someone who will give you, you know, a 10 or a 15 sack season. But someone who can definitely get 10 to 12 
if he has a good season. Now, again, coming off an injury, looks like he's going to be okay. But this is another signing where I'm like, not bad at all. And to add him alongside Aiden Hutchinson is massive. Now, again, when you look at the defense here for the uh, for the Detroit Lions, we love this, right? You add a new defensive end, a guy who can get to the quarterback, create some turnovers in terms of fumbles, DJ Reader guy who could be a, a strict nose tackle, not going to get too much pressure on the quarterback, but will help stuff the run at the goal line. And you pair those guys up with Aiden Hutchinson, who is nasty, probably going to be a defensive player of the year at some point of his career and then you have a Lee McNeil who is actually starting to really play well over here in Detroit I think he took a massive jump up and I think he'll continue to look good right and then we talk about you know Jack Campbell we talk about Derek Barnes and Alex Anzalone linebacker room is really really good they love Jalen Reeves Maven as well so you didn't really need to improve that line or that uh, room at all as they continue to continue to develop right Jack Campbell is only going to get better from here but then they make such an underrated move in Carlton Davis now again we talked about the past defense needing to improve they brought in a new DB here they were giving up the 30th right they were allowing 7.4 yards per pass attempt that is terrible almost dead last and also 31st in terms of pass yards a lot per game 22 in sack percentage they needed to be get, to get better in this aspect Carlton Davis is not only a good cornerback but he's won a Super Bowl as well and knows what it takes to get there defensively now, Carlton Davis is such a big upgrade to the cornerback room. You talk about guys on the roster already with obviously Brian Branch, the former second round pick of last season, Cameron Sutton, a guy they brought back. They love Cameron Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley, right? Carlton Davis steps in and is a day one starter. Now, in a second, we're going to look at his stats, but this dude fits right into this defense as a dog, a guy who knows how to win fo football games defensively. He's been there. He's won a Super Bowl once Tom Brady joined them, right? So I think he fits into their system, you know, to a T, right? A guy who can create some turnovers. They were one of the worst defenses in the NFL last year um, in terms of yards a lot per pass. He does such a good job, you know, going up against number one wide receivers and just getting breakups right getting his ball or his hand into the into the uh, catch radius of the wide receiver and just making sure they're not going to catch the football again right here look at this rips it out of Michael Pittman's hands great job versus Jamar Chase boom diving interception right you see this all the time with uh, Carlton Davis and I still think he is massively slept on in terms of his production man and you know not a guy who's scared to tackle as well in Detroit what do we like to do like to tackle man we don't want guys who are afraid to put a bo their body on line Carlton Davis is really not that guy at all right he will do whatever it takes to win football games and this is a massive addition let's look at some of his stats over the last year or two now right away what you're gonna notice is this number right here 73 pass deflections I mean you look at his second year in the NFL 19 pass deflections right? And then you go 18 in 2020 with four interceptions. This guy is everywhere. He is a ball hawk. He's going to make plays. And he's going to make, it a ma make him at a high level. 12 in 2022, nine last season. The man is always productive. Two interceptions, one, one, four, one. Always knows how to get his hands on the football. He's also a good tackler. Can force some fumbles as well. But 324 tackles over a six-year career just goes to show he is not afraid of Put his body on the line and right away you look at this Detroit Lions uh, defense he will be a massive addition right now Emmanuel Mosley uh, can step in be a guy off the bench you also add a guy in Amik Robertson who we'll talk about in a second Kirby Joseph uh, Melifonwu Cam Sun Brian Branch secondary looks really really good aside from they need to add depth they need another safety need some more nickel corner depth and uh, maybe just some more corner depth in general I know they like Craig James a little bit right or Stephen Gilmore got some burn last year undrafted free agent of last season he's also not bad the brother Stephon Gilmore so we'll see how that works out but man what a good DB room well, let's finish it off by talking about Amik Roberson now the one thing you'll notice about Amik Roberson is he kind of does it all right now he is a little bit shorter 5'9 183 pounds but only 25 years old and again fits the mold of Detroit a dog an absolute dog guys 50 tackles last season right being 5'8 also one sack one forced fumble two interceptions a guy who does it all right i mean look at these back-to-back -back seasons you get a guy off the corner um you know can can add a little bit of speed a little bit of dogness a guy who does is not afraid to tackle at his size a couple of sacks a couple of forced fumbles got four interceptions in the last two seasons as well um to go along with 15 pass deflections 
this guy is a good corner, right? Um, and now, he's not going to come in and be a day one starter for this defense who, again, struggled. I do apologize in this video a couple of times. I think I messed up. It didn't really show you. Uh, but here you go. You guys can see it right here. Ranked 22 in sack percentage, number 10 in terms of interception percentage. But this is where they need to get better. 31 in pass yards per game allowed. And then 30 in yards a lot per pass. So I think what they've done to this defense, when you look at the depth chart, you go down here and see the moves that they've made. I love it, man. I think they've done such a good job building this roster over the last couple of seasons and now making the uh, adjustments to really take over this team. I mean, offensively, they've always been nasty. Or last season, they were nasty, right? Didn't need to improve that at all. Instead, they go out and add an offensive guard who is one of the best in the game in, in terms of stopping or stopping a uh, you know, pass rush, right? And then defensively, their run game was sick, right? They add guys, they make that better, especially stopping at the goal line with the nose tackle and DJ Reader. You come out and you just need to be able to guard the pass, right? And that's exactly what they did. Carlton Davis, uh, Meek Roberson, along with the development of Jack Campbell and Brian Branch and uh, some of these other guys on the defense as well in, in terms of Kirby Joseph and, um, you know, Emmanuel Mosey getting fully back into it, um, Melifonwu. This team is going to be scary, man. And as they continue to develop, as they continue to showcase their chemistry together, this will be the scariest football team in the NFL. Now, do me a favor. Comment down below a letter grade for their offseason so far. But also, subscribe, hit the like button, join the family. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys want part two. If I see enough comments saying part two, part two will be coming out very, very soon. Especially as they continue to sign more guys. If they do, uh, you know, part two will be dropping sooner than you think. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.